just so much fun. We would come out here and like it would be cars out here, just people hanging out, and then you just get nachos and the hot dogs and just all the things that are so bad for you now. And just we would hang out and just have fun. Listening to the bands play and just you know hanging out. Just hanging out. So we can go past Gately. those times just when life was simple you know where you just meet up with your friends and go watch a football game life was simple then very simple and you know just having fun not to think that in a couple years everything would change and change so drastically so yes we had a ball we we lived life and I mean just we had fun. We had we I the times that we would spend together would be in laughter. Like just pure laughter and just <laughs> just uh yeah, we had so much fun together. Yeah. Teasing each other, joking about just life stuff, weights. I had nicknames for Blair and for my other friend Kendall and you know, it was just, we was we was kids just having fun. Like everything was a joke. <laughs> like it was like nothing was not funny. Like we found everything just hilarious and yeah, we would just have a good time together. So yeah. right there uh, th those two windows were my room and then those three windows right there were the living room and then it was the kitchen behind there and then back there was my mom and my dad's room and it was nice it was a nice time here and like I said I met Blair here so this will always be a very important place in my heart and so I hope this building isn't torn down, unfortunately, like his grandparents' store was, but, you know, I will always, I'm always fond of, any time I drive through here, I think about me living here and me going to Blair's grandparents' store. So, yeah, it's this, this street is very important to me. Very, very much so. So you will enter from there on the corner and then like actually right here probably where we're standing just a little bit right there was where the uh, desk was and it was like candy where you would get you know just like the lemon heads and warheads and so uh, Blair's grandparents they had pictures of Blair um, in his football uniform on the desk and so when I would come in here that was like how I saw him first was the pictures and you know I would talk to Mr. and Mrs. Nance when I came here and then it was just like one day I came in here and he was sitting there and I'm like oh that's the boy from the pictures and he was just as animated as his pictures just you know just the beautiful soul that stood out it's sad that it's not here anymore but their memory will live on and I will always remember this location. He was just so animated and just such a so goofy. I just I don't even know how else to to describe him. Like he found everything funny, always laughing, always giggly. I just I would never forget his little 
fat face and his curly hair. In high school, we went to each other's schools for games and stuff like that, football games or basketball games. Just anything you could think of that normal teenagers do like we did. You know, everybody just loved Blair. Like to know him was to love him. He was just a, a really nice person. I remember that day like it was yesterday because his death just totally changed everything. The whole, everything that I thought that I knew, thought that I wanted to do, it just upended my entire life at the time. I had my life planned. I knew what high school I was gonna go to well before high school. I knew what college I was gonna go to, you know, so I had planned out my, my entire life. And that changed literally on May 10th, 2007. I remember just calling his phone for like all the time after that just to listen to his voicemail like and it was sad like I just had this number and, and I I mean I, I kept that number for years and years and years bunch of kids just out here and so they got on on the bus right there and the bus was traveling in this direction headed that way it's this odd sensation of just wanting to be there i mean there's nothing probably that i could have possibly done but just i don't know like being in this area like knowing that this is home knowing that i went to school down the street you know and like just knowing that we were moving around in the city at the same time, it just unnerves me. Like, you know, I just, I don't know. I wish it was something I could do or it was a day that he just didn't get on the bus. I, I think about it so much like what could have been different. Like, yeah, so yeah, there's nothing I could have done, but I don't know. Took this one. And then this one. So those are the only two pictures I took of him. That's all that's left like he's not here so all you have is memories and pictures it's a void that never has been filled and will never be filled like i will always mourn him i'll always miss him i just wish i took more pictures and yeah just save more memories people say it gets easier but it's just like time passes. It's not necessarily that it gets easier. It's just you learn to live with the grief. You move on with the grief with you. So well, this is not just a problem that happens in black communities. It's not just a problem that happens in inner city communities. This is happening all over the country. This is an American problem. So many things have kind of happened to allow this problem to continue on. Politicians are not getting behind common sense gun legislation. The NRA who backs a lot of these guns being out here in the streets, like having access to guns, they take no responsibility for this problem. To them, it's not even an issue. And that's just deplorable. Like what you believe in 
and what you're supporting and putting money behind is a lot of lives being lost. Like you need to take some type of responsibility. Um, within our, our communities, the reason why so much inner fighting is because people are fighting over resources. Like there are not enough jobs to go around. There's not enough housing. There's not enough resources for people to have. And so people are fighting over these resources. This is crazy. And the system has been set up to allow it to keep happening. Blair's name will always be alive for me and always will be included in my story. And so not only will I be trying to help other families, but always honoring my friend who was lost to gun violence. So when I think about the future, that's what I think about.